This program brought to you in part by the Erica Lewis Endowment Fund. Coming up next on Varsity Quiz, it's Liberty yeah. taking on Palo Verde. Yeah. This is Varsity Quiz. Hello and welcome to the 53rd season of Varsity Quiz. We've got the best and the brightest high school students matching wits in this unique academic competition. The road to the Silver League Championship continues with Liberty facing Palo Verde. Now, Liberty finished second in their division. Their starters are, let's meet them. There's Caleb. Hey, Caleb. Kareen, hi. Michaela, howdy. And there's Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, the team from Liberty. Now for Palo Verde, they finished in a three-way tie in their division. Starters for Palo, we've got Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Owen, Ethan, and Yishi. Ladies and gentlemen, Palo Verde. Coaches for Liberty, David Fisher. For Palo Verde, Frank Franco. Students, are you ready? Let's play Varsity Quiz. The National Weather Service defines a blizzard with two metrics and the requirement that they last for at least three hours. First, visibility must be less than one quarter of a mile. What's the second requirement? We'll go with Liberty, Joe. A foot of snow? No. Palo, Owen? Half a foot of snow. No, it's strong wind greater than 35 miles an hour. No points, next question. According to Bernoulli's principle, what decreases as the speed of a moving fluid increases? Liberty, Joe? Buoyancy? Incorrect. Palo, Owen? Volume. No, we're looking for pressure. No points. We move on. Ecologically speaking, what's the name for any plant that is the first to colonize an ecosystem that's been damaged? Palo, Owen? Keystone species. No. Liberty, Joe? Parent species? No, it's a pioneer plant or species. Next question. What fortune-telling toy uses an icosahedron floating? Palo, Ethan? People. I think we can take that. Nope, okay, we can't take that. Liberty, Michaela. A magic eight ball. There you go. Points on the board for Liberty. Next question is a calculation question. Find the average acceleration of a subway train that slows down from 12 meters per second to 9.6 meters per second in eight tenths of a second. Repeating. Find the average acceleration of a subway train that slows down from 12 meters per second to nine. We'll go with Liberty, Joe. Three meters per second squared. Incorrect. Hello, Ethan. 0 0.3 meters per second squared. No, it is negative 3 meters per second squared. Next question. What term describes a financial instrument that pays a person a fixed amount of money for a specific period of time, usually the rest of his or her life? Uh, Liberty, Michaela. Pension. No. Hello, Aaron. 401k. No, that's called an annuity. No points. Next question. This line from Moby Dick is about what? Glow. All the yard arms were tripped with pallid fire and touched at each tripointed lightning rod end with three tapering white flames. Each of the three tall masts was silently burning in that sulfurous air like three gigantic wax tapers before an altar. Uh, Liberty, Michaela. Aurora Borealis. No. We're looking for St. Elmo's fire. Next question. Gustav is the first name of which Austrian composer of Das Lied van der Erde that is hidden in this anagram. Vulgar ham set. <laughs> Gustav Muller. Next question. What form of exercise created by a German to build strength, increase flexibility, create lean muscle tone, emphasizes the body's core through breathing, correct alignment, flowing movement? And that's Liberty Joe. Pilates? Yes. Next question. From Greek mythology, who killed the Gorgon Medusa? Liberty, Michaela. Perseus? Yes. A female horse is a mare. What term correctly names a female donkey? Hello, Ethan. Bray. No. Liberty, Michaela. A nag. No, it's a Jenny. Next question, which U.S. state capital is home to a royal palace? Uh, Liberty, Joe. Honolulu. Yes. What grammatical order is illustrated in this line? 
Not only is he difficult to understand, but he is also funny. Liberty, Joe. Compound sentence. Incorrect. That is inverted order. Next question. Second only to Indonesia, the world's second largest Muslim population resides in which South Asian nation? Liberty Joe. Bangladesh. Incorrect. Hello, Owen. Pakistan. Yes. Okay, uh, calculation question next, students. Bruce is four years younger than Hector. Twenty years ago, Hector's age was 13 years more than half the age of Bruce. How old are they now? Repeating, Bruce, four years younger than Hector. 20 years ago, Hector's age was 13 years more than half the age of Bruce. How old are they now? Hector is 42, Bruce is 38, and I'm confused. Next question. What adjective means situated in the spaces between such structures as cells or grains of sand? Oh, it's interstitial. Next question. Used for such purposes as disinfecting water, soothing dry skin, disinfecting small cuts, getting... Paolo, Aaron? Chlorine. Incorrect, and that is a deduction. Can't getting rid of canker sores, battling foot fungus. What's the name for the chemical compound H2O2? <phone rings> Liberty, Joe. Hydrogen peroxide. Yes. How many teeth will a typical adult have, assuming removal of all the wisdom teeth? <phone rings> Liberty, Michaela. 28. Yes. What kind of words are these? Dilly dally. Honky tonk, knick knack, and hoity toity. Now they're reminiscent of something rebounding from a surface. Paolo Owen. Onomatopoeia. No. They are referred to as ricochet words. Next question. In which U.S. state, part of the Southeastern Conference, will you find a full scale replica of Noah's Ark constructed based on dimensions contained in the Bible? Uh, Powell Owen. Georgia. No. Liberty Joe. University of Florida. No, we're looking for Kentucky. Next question. So calculation question. A silo shaped like a cone contains wheat. Its radius is 10 feet, its height 15 feet, and it can release wheat from its bottom at the rate of 25 cubic feet per minute. Now we're using 3.14 for pi. So how long to the nearest minute would it take for the silo to empty completely? I'll repeat. A silo is shaped like a cone, contains wheat, radius 10 feet. We'll go with Liberty Joe. 63 minutes. Yes. What's the full name of the protagonist of Jules Verne's novel Around the World in 80 Days? Palo Verde, Yishi? Phileas Fogg. Yes. What are the call letters for the National Public Radio Station in Southern Nevada? Nevada Public Radio, KNPR. Next question. The nickname, the Great Asparagus, was given to which future president of the French Republic by his classmates at a military academy prior to World War I? Hmm, Charles de Gaulle. The following Olympic athletes excelled in which event? Katerina Witt, Peggy Fleming, Tara Lipinski, Dorothy Hamill, Nancy Kerrigan, and Michelle Kwan. Paolo Owen. Swimming. No. Uh, Liberty Kareem. Ice skating. Yes. I think we can take that. All right. Hey, that is the end of our first round. But before we go, we want to learn a little bit more about our players. And we're going to start with the uh, students from Liberty. We start with the 10th grader, Caleb. Hey, Caleb. How's it going? Good. Good to have you here. What happens in the robotics club at Liberty? Well, we, uh, we cut lots of metal and put gears together and just kind of put stuff together until something works. Uh, and do you go to competitions and stuff? Yes. How's, how's that going? Uh, it's, it's going good. Our, our, robot's, uh, our robot's pretty good. Awesome. Well, good luck with that and good luck here at Varsity Quiz. Thanks, Caleb. Here is a 12th grader, Corrine. Hi, Corrine. Hello. What is the LIFE club? Oh, so that's Life Club. Um, basically, we teach our students more about 
things you learn outside of school. So recently we taught our students about how to apply for scholarships or make resumes. Nice. Good luck with that. Good luck at varsity quiz. Thanks, Thank Corinne. Uh, here's 12th grader Michaela. Hi, Michaela. Hi. Tell me about the Yarn Barn Crafting Club. Um, so we're mainly focused on teaching students at our school how to crochet or knit, so it's mainly yarn crafts. Have you been doing that for a while? About 10, 12 years, yeah. Awesome. Good luck with that. Good luck here on Varsity Quiz. Thank you. And here's senior Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi. It says that you are in four different choir groups. Yep. Can you name them? So at my school, I am in the Intermediate Women's Choir. I am in our chamber choir. I am in our student-led a cappella octet. And I am the student leader of our jazz quartet. Wow. And what voice do you sing? I'm a soprano. Awesome. Well, good luck with that. Good luck on Varsity Quiz. That's our team from Liberty. Now we're going to meet our students from Palo Verde. We'll start with 10th grader Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Hello. You have an unusual hobby here. It says you restore... You, uh, it's old vehicles, like used vehicles. Like what are you working on right now? I have a 1973 Datsun 240Z. I might want to talk to you about buying that when it's done. Well, I don't, I don't know about that. Okay. Well, good luck with that, Aaron. Good luck here at Varsity Quiz. Uh, here's 12th grader Owen. Hi, Owen. Hello. It says here that you have created an app. Yep. What, what does your app do? Uh, basically, the player, it's just, it's in space, and the player controls a satellite as it goes around the Earth and dodges asteroids. Whoa. Yeah. Congratulations. Good luck with that. Good luck in varsity quiz. Thanks, Owen. Uh, here's senior Ethan. Hi, Ethan. Hi. Uh, it says here you have an unusual breakfast habit. Yeah, I pour my milk before the cereal. Oh, no, Ethan, you'll have to leave. Oh. No, I'm just kidding with you. It. Does that work for you? It does. Do you have a favorite cereal? Us, probably Cheerios. Okay. Well, good luck with that, and good luck here on Varsity Quiz. Here's 12th grader Yishi. Hi, Yishi. Hi. It says here you play a couple of musical instruments. Mm -hmm. What do you play? I play the piano and the violin. And how long have you been playing each? Uh, I've been playing the piano for um, around 11 years and the violin around seven years. Wow. Well, good luck with that. Good luck on our varsity quiz. That's our team from Palo Verde. And our bonus round is coming right up. Going into round two, here's our score. Liberty with 40 points to Palo Verde's zero. Now, they did answer some questions correctly, but they also had deductions because of interruptions. Uh, we have one new player for Liberty. We'll say hello to Michael. Hey, Michael. Hi. Glad to have you here. Uh, Palo Verde's keeping the uh, same players. So, in this bonus round, each of 10 possible questions is worth five points. Now, the team with correct answers will get two more bonus questions. They're each worth five points. Now, team conferring is allowed in these bonus questions. Ten seconds before we ask for the response from the team's captain. Now this round is timed at six minutes. Time starts as I start this question. Who is credited with inventing the mercury in glass thermometer in 1714? Liberty Joe. Lavoisier. Incorrect. Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit. Next question for both teams. What term names the gold standard for exper experimental research? The condition where none of the individuals participating in the project know which treatment any given subject receives. <laughs> Liberty, Joe. Double blind? Yes. Bonus questions now for Liberty only. Answer the following about experimental research. First, in order to graph research, which variable goes on which axis? Second. Which letter of the Greek alphabet is used to describe the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis of an experiment? Okay. Yeah, 10 seconds. I think it's first standard independent. Okay, yeah. First answer, the x axis is the independent variable and the y axis is the dependent variable. Second answer, alpha. Both are correct. You've got bonus points. Now this next question for both teams. The oldest running animated TV series still in production is The Simpsons, which is in its 33rd season. So what's the second oldest animated series currently in its 25th and final season? Paolo, Owen? Flintstones. No. Liberty, Michaela? South Park. No, it's Arthur. You guys remember Arthur? All right, next question for both teams. What's the oldest national park in the United States? Liberty, Michaela? Yellowstone? Yes, bonus questions now for Liberty only about national parks. First, Yellowstone National Park, the second oldest in the world. The oldest was established in 1778 in the area surrounding Bogdkan Ul Mountain. In what country is this oldest park located? Second, 
the waters of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans meet at the world's most southern national park. What country is home to Cabo de Hornos National Park? You have 10 seconds. Is the second answer? Where's Bob going in here? Is it Chile, do you think? Maybe Chile. Okay. Yeah. First answer, anyone? No. No. Okay. Italy. Sure. Captain. Uh, first answer, Indonesia. Second answer, Chile. Chile is correct. The first is Mongolia. So you get some bonus points, but not all of them. Now, this question for both teams is a calculation question, students. What's the decimal equivalent of the hexadecimal number 2A? Repeating, what is the decimal equivalent of the hexadecimal number 2A? We'll go with Paolo Owen. 12. Incorrect. Liberty Joe. 37. Incorrect. We're looking for 42. Next question for both teams. For whom is the Cosmonauts Training Center in Star City, Russia named? Uh, Paolo Owen. Gagarin. Yes. Bonus questions now for Paolo only. Answer the following associated with space. First, which space shuttle is named for the ship on which Robert Scott first sailed to Antarctica? Second, what does Mir, the name of the Russian space station, mean in the Russian language? You have 10 seconds. Captain. For the first, Challenger. For the second, Light. Both are incorrect. We're looking for discovery, and mere means peace. No bonus points. This question for both teams. Which form of matter has a defined volume, but not a defined shape? Liberty, Joe? Liquid. Yes. Bonus questions now for Liberty only about chemistry. First, which branch studies the principles that govern the way that atoms, molecules, and other chemical systems behave? Second, which subfield focuses on the structure and behavior of the molecules that all plants and animals require for life? You have 10 seconds. Captain? Uh, first answer, stoichiometry. Second answer, no answer. Both are incorrect. We're looking for physical chemistry or PCHEM and organic chemistry. No bonus points. Next question for both teams. Queen Elizabeth I's death ended the Tudor monarchies and started which period? Liberty, Joe? Stuart. Yes. Answer the following questions for Liberty Only about English monarchs. In what calendar year did England have three kings? Harold II, Edgar II, and William I. And what was the last royal house to rule England ending in with 1707's Acts of Union? You have 10 seconds. The second one is the Hanovers. I don't really know that. Okay, I think so. I know the first one's 1066. Okay, we good with that? First answer, 1066. Second answer, Hanover. 1066 is correct. The other answer was Stuart. So you get some bonus questions, but not all. And this question for both teams. Reword this line in future perfect tense. Many are called. Liberty, Michaela. Many will have been called. Yes, Liberty. I bonus questions for Liberty only now about grammar. What kind of conjunction is used in this line? The great auk is not only a scholar, but also a noted fisherman. Second, name a conjunctive adverb that includes more. You have 10 seconds. More so. Okay. So the first one's coordinating, right? I think so. Coordinating, yeah. Okay. First answer, coordinating conjunction. Second answer, more so. Both are incorrect. We're looking for correlative conjunction, and we would have accepted furthermore or moreover. And we're out of time, but before we go, we want to say thank you to the Kiwanis Club of Las Vegas. You know, they help provide judges for the in-school competitions that lead up to where we are here today. Also, a big shout out to the staff and the leadership of the Clark County School District's Student Activities Department. They coordinate every step of the program from early in the school year all the way to the championships. And our speed round is coming right up. Going into round three, the score, Liberty with 85 points to Palo Verde's five. Anything can happen in this third round. Now we have a returning player for Liberty. We say welcome back, Caleb. Hey, Caleb, good to have you here. Uh, Palo is keeping their same players. In the speed round, we have 30 questions. Correct answers are also worth five points. Now this is a timed round, six minutes. We'll get to as many questions as we can. If we get to all 30, obviously that would be uh, when the match would be over. And time starts right now. What technique allows you to cook an egg outside of the shell while retaining an intact runny yolk? 
Uh, Paolo, Aaron? Sunny side up. No? <laughs> Liberty, Michaela? Poaching? Yes. Uh, which B vitamin is important for pregnant women or those planning to become pregnant for its role in preventing certain birth defects? <laughs> Paolo, Ethan? B12. No? Too late? Okay, the answer, folic acid. Next question, what's the most southern country on the Arabian Peninsula? Uh, Paolo, Owen? Oman. No? Uh, Liberty, Caleb? Yemen. Yes. The Nike swoosh, Adidas's three stripes, and the Starbucks mermaid are all examples of intellectual property protected by what? Uh, Paolo, Owen? Trademark. Yes. The abduction of which aviator's infant son Hello, Ethan. Charles Lindbergh. Yes. Which mold is added to give blue cheese its distinctive colored veins? It also provided the uh, first antibiotic. Liberty Joe. Penicillin. No. Hello, Yishi. Penicillium. Yes. Okay, what family with a middle school named for it owns the Las Vegas Sun newspaper? Hello, Ethan. Sigrogich. No. Liberty Joe? Or? No, it is the Greenspun family. Next question is a calculation question. We don't repeat in this round. Provide the prime factorization for 595. Hello, Ethan. 5 times 119. Incorrect. Uh, we're looking for 17, 7, and 5. Next question, what's the primary difference between sashimi and sushi? Hello, Ethan. Rice. Yes. What term names a country house in Russia? Called a daka. Next question, in which industry did James Buck Duke make his fortune? Hello, uh, Ethan. Agriculture? No. We're looking for tobacco. Next question. James Bond, famous for driving that Aston Martin DB5 with special features. In which film did the car make its debut? Paolo, Aaron? Goldfinger? Yes, a great movie. Excluding the independent municipality of Carson City, how many counties make up Nevada? Paolo, Ethan? 26. Incorrect. Liberty, Joe? Nine? No, it is 16. Uh, what kind of enormous German aircraft carried out the first bombings against Britain in 1915? Uh, that's Liberty, Michaela. A Zeppelin? No. Palo, Aaron? Blimp? No, we're actually looking for dirigibles as the term. Next question, on what day will the 23rd century begin? Palo, Owen? 2199. Incorrect. Uh, Liberty, Joe. January 1st, 2401. Incorrect, January 1, 2201. Which treaty drafted by Pope Alexander VI divided the lands of the Western Hemisphere between the Portuguese, I uh, will go with Liberty, Michaela. The Treaty of Tordesillas. Yes. Sydney has an appointment with an otolaryngologist. What kind of doctor will he be seeing? Hello, Ethan. Larynx. No. Uh, Liberty, Joe. An ENT. Yes. Which Founding Fathers' incorrect last words on July 4th, 1826 were, Jefferson lives! Uh, Paolo Owen? John Adams. Yes. Stephen King released a sequel to the bestseller, The Shining. What's it called? Liberty, Michaela? Dr. Sleep. Yeah, I can't wait to read that one. Next, a calculation question. A roast takes 24 minutes per pound to cook and an extra 7 minutes per pound if boneless. How much oven time will a 5-pound, 12-ounce bone-in roast require? Uh, Liberty Joe? 155 minutes. Incorrect. Paolo Ishii? 120 minutes. No, it's 138 minutes, but I'm hungry. What's the lowest possible score in a football game? Paolo Owen? 2 to 0. Yes. Uh, which U.S. states nicknamed the Centennial State? Liberty Joe? Colorado? Yes. The commanding officer in the television show MASH was a colonel, so what would be the equivalent rank in the U.S. Navy? 
Uh, Liberty Caleb? Admiral. No. Tano Owen? Rear Admiral. No, it's Captain. What island nation is on both the Eurasian and North American plates? Tano Owen? Iceland. Yes. The name of which constellation means harp or lyre? Uh, Liberty, Michaela? Lyra? Yes. The atmospheric pressure of what planet is about 92 times stronger than that of uh, Liberty, Caleb? Venus? Yes. What's the world's southernmost national capital city? Hello, Owen? Uh, Wellington. Uh, your first answer is the one we have to take. Liberty, Joe? Wellington. Yes. Calculation question next. What's the slope of any line parallel to the line 8x plus 9y equals 3? Hello, Ethan. Negative eight ninths. Yes. Simulcast is a blend of what two words? Liberty, Joe. Simultaneous and, and broadcast. Yes. And we're out of time. Let's find out who won. Final score, Liberty with 135 points to Palo Verde's 50. We want to say thank you to both teams. An excellent match. And congratulations to Liberty on the win. Now we invite you to tune in next week. Coronado is going to be taking on Shadow Ridge. That's sure to be another exciting matchup on Varsity Quiz. Right here on Vegas PBS.